How you doing? My name is Jake Kaminsky with Kaminsky Chassis Fabrication, or KFab, and I'm here today to talk to you about our tubular drop spindles for C10 pickups. Um, we offer them in a customizable format, so everything from drop to offset, um, brake options, um, ball joint options, are all customizable and built to order. Uh, our two main primary spindles are the regular standard GM brake option, uh, that's disc brake option, or this one, which is the modular brake option. So this has uh, the ability to accept the 14 or 15 inch rotors and run the bare brakes or the Wildwood brake systems on these trucks, utilizing both uh, five on five as well as six on five and a half. Uh, um, these all accept standard inch and a quarter heavy duty rotors and are offered with customizable options like drop heights, so how much of a drop you would like in the truck, as well as track width. Now, I built a jig, and I'll show you that a little bit later, comparing the original drum brakes from the early C10s, comparing them to other drop spindles out on the market, and our drop spindle, and show you how ours, in real world application, is the narrowest on the market. So as you start going from drum brakes to disc brakes and lowering the vehicle, especially with drop spindles, it actually widens the truck out quite a bit. Um, and that ends up being a problem when you're running into fender clearance issues with your wheels and tires, especially if you bought the wheels and tires before you did the drop or bagged the truck, and now you're running into really bad clearance issues. Well, ours moves the wheel back inboard quite a lot, as we'll show you here shortly. Our spindles are built in-house right here in the USA, are fully customizable, tubular in design, and with being tubular, there's a whole lot of unsprung weight savings. These spindles are the lightest on the market by far, however, they are proven to work in racing applications, and that's where I got the idea to build these for the C10 pickups. My father was building race cars and spindles for years and years um, for circle track racing, and these have withstood heavy, heavy abuse in the uh, on the track taking wheels to wheels wheels to doors wheels to walls and not had any failures with the spindle so if it's good enough for the rigors of the racing industry it's definitely going to hold up for years and years on your street vehicle okay so we're going to talk about the weight of the spindles this is a stock spindle with the steering arm obviously there's no backing plate so the stock drum brakes spindle with the steering arm without the backing plate is 11 and a half pounds. The classic performance parts two and a half inch modular drop spindle with the GM brake bracket it weighs in at 20 pounds. And then the McGoffey's two and a half inch drop spindle is 23 pounds as it comes stock. So uh, next up and last is the KFAB tubular drop spindles and the scale will not go low enough to weigh one at a time. So the pair of them together with the brake brackets is 18 pounds. So that's nine pounds each. So before we see how the different manufacturer drop spindles affects the width of your vehicle, I'm gonna show you the jig that I built to measure this stuff. So this upright tube here, the front face of it, so on this, this side here, is in line with the center line of the ball joints, the upper and the lower. So I have this piece of angle iron that I put in here, and at the height that the pin is, so not too low and definitely not too high, the height that the pin is, I put the top edge of this and I clamp it to the tube. And so this simulates the center line of the ball joints. The reason I do it at the pin height is because you can see that it's angled backwards. So if I moved it up or down it, different from where the center line of the pin is, it would not be a real world measurement to see how each spindle affects the width. And then we take this one here, which I have a couple holes drilled for the lugs, and it will mount to the face of the wheel. This one stays still, but I will run a lug nut on just to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna place the camera directly above overhead that will sight down the edge of this. So that will give you the true face of the surface of the wheel. So this isn't off at an angle because you would it would change the way you saw it, you know, either direction. It's clamped flat against where this wheel mounts to the face of the rotor or the drum. And then we again sight down the edge of this piece of steel and we will get our measurements from the center line of the ball joint 
to the, where the face of the wheel mounts and then we can compare apples to apples in a real world application. So as you can see, this piece of angle iron is clamped in the center of the lower ball joint. And then obviously this piece is on the front side of the drum where the wheel surface would mount. And you can see on the, this tape and this tape, we have five and three sixteenths. So that shows you that the center line, excuse me, the face of the wheel mounting surface to the center line of the ball joint is five and three sixteenths on a stock drum setup. So this is our modular brake drop spindle at two and a half inch drop. However, the drop and the brake caliper mounting bracket has nothing to do with the width of the spindle itself. The limiting factor is the lower ball joint will run into the rotor. So this is basically as narrow as you could possibly run it. And from the center line of the ball joint to the face of the wheel is five and a half inches. So that's only five sixteenths of an inch wider per side than a stock drum brake stock spindle. So again, this is the same setup. This is the classic performance parts modular drop spindle this time. From the center line of where the ball joints are to the face of the wheel is five and 11 sixteenths, which is a half inch wider than a stock drum brake system. So this is McGoffey's two and a half inch drop spindle. From the center line of the ball joints to where the face of the wheel mounts is six and three sixteenths which is one full inch wider than stock drum brakes. So a couple of neat features also that come standard on our drop spindles is they are powder coated standard. The standard color that they will come in is a dull textured black. This is a high gloss black, which is also an option and basically any other color you can think of. Um, also, we are willing to do any custom colors by request as well. However, that may increase lead time on them. They are all made of DOM mild steel with the exception of the pin, which is a higher higher carbon steel to make sure it's uh, less susceptible to bending. Um, everything is MIG welded. They do come standard with 5 8 fine threaded steering arms for a uh, high misalignment uh, 5 8 rod end or hind joint. So people that are running bag setups can use those or on your standard truck as well. Another neat thing is that all of our brackets are also cut in-house, threaded and finished in-house um, on our CNC plasma table, including the brackets for the steering arms, or the gussets rather, for the steering arms, the brake brackets, and also the bracket that is uh, welded to the spindle itself. Thanks for watching. Head to KaminskyChassisFab.com to check out more information on the drop spindles as well as any other products that we do have. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that way you get notified every time we upload videos. We won't be putting just product videos up, but also other videos to watch as well about projects we are working on. Thanks. Take it easy.